Welcome everybody to another episode of Sprocket and Claw. Today we're going to be loading a magazine for the Airy SR2. So first and foremost, everything that we do here today, you need to do in complete darkness. You cannot do this on a bench with light everywhere. Um, we have a dummy roll of film that is old and used up and what we're going to be doing is just showing you exactly how to do it in the magazine so that you can see the process. This is a standard Harrison film bag. I believe it's a medium. Um, if you're working with really big magazines, you may want to get a little larger size. This essentially allows you to be anywhere on set and load and unload your film. So one of the greatest features of the Airy SR2 or SR series in general is the coaxial magazines. Essentially what you have is your feed side which you will load the unexposed film in and that runs through the gate and is taken up on the take up side right here. So this magazine is about half the size of a standard 35 millimeter magazine that has both reels on in, in within the same door. So the footprint is small and it's very, very fast to load. The pressure plate being on the magazine makes this process very, very simple. You essentially just grab the magazine after it's been loaded and even preloaded before you go to set and you just snap it onto the back and the camera is ready to roll. This is the feed side. So this is where we're actually going to be loading our brand new roll of film. Um, what you'll, what you'll want to have on hand is a brush just to kind of clean this thing out. Like we don't want any dust in here. There's a good chance that your film might pick it up and drag it through the gate and affect your image. This may be a little controversial and I'm not really sure the protocol, but I do use a can of air uh, to just kind of clean up the rest of the dust. Um, some people say don't use air. I say as long as it's not spitting out moisture, you're probably fine. What we have here as a dummy roll is just some really, really old film that is definitely not any good. So that way we can show you this process and we're not in a film bag. In most cans, this can has already been opened, there is a black bag that this film will be sitting in. Um, it will have a piece of tape over the very end of the film and what I like to do with that is I like to put it in the bottom of the can when I'm in my film bag because the last thing you want to do is have that thing stuck inside your magazine somehow. I've oriented the magazine to face me because this is how I would be in the film bag. It's backwards to you now. But what you'll see here is we have the end of the roll and we have an arrow right here that's indicating how you're going to thread this in. And if you can see, right here is this little slot, this little opening, and that's where you're going to be feeding the film through. In the feed side is a little core that goes in the middle of the film core right here. We'll just leave that on. So before we place the film on the core, we're gonna wanna feed a little bit through the slot here. And then we're gonna go ahead and place the film down on here. There you go. Now your film is actually coming out the, where the pressure plate is up here. Most all film magazines have this line which indicates how far to take the end of your film to form a proper loop. And at this point in the process, we can close the feed side door and we can do the rest in light. We no longer need a film bag. The reason why I mention this is because if you have a typical film mag that just has one door that opens up and has feed and take up on the same side, you have to do everything in the bag. So on coaxial magazines, you only have to do half of the process in a film bag in darkness. So before you shut the door, you're gonna wanna make sure that you release this, this guide, which essentially tells you on the back how much feet you've shot. And so the little film guide that we put into place just before we shut the door, it indicates how much film you have in the feed side. So as you shoot throughout the day, this little indicator is going to move its way down until it gets to zero, and you'll know it's time to load a new magazine. So as I mentioned before, we're going to the take up side now, and you can do this out of a film bag. Again, the door works the exact same way as the feed side. We're just gonna open the door, and in the take up side, you will see a collapsible core, which essentially allows you to roll the end of your film into this little slot and pinch and it grabs onto your film as it's taking it up. All right, so we've got the proper length of film 
and we're going to feed it back through the underside right here. There's a bit of a curvature of the inside of this magazine that you will follow. It's very hard to show, but you'll essentially get the film up in there and as you're pushing, you'll start to see everything move in unison. And that means that the sprockets have grabbed and then you can advance it just like this with the gear. So as you can see, the, the pinch point on this collapsible core has moved to the other side. So I'm just gonna pull it out, rotate it so that it's facing in a direction that the film will feed into easily. So what we'll do here is we will slide the film in here and then you essentially just open the core, which makes it nice and tight for the take up. So what I like to do here is just advance some film, get a loop or two around there, make sure to put this into position and that'll keep the tension nice and tight. And then we're gonna close the door. So you'll see we have a, a small film loop, which is the proper size because we drug our film out to that indicator line. Next, we just need to put the film onto the pressure plate and it'll be ready to load on the camera. All right, now what we're gonna do is we're just gonna feed our loop. There's two little channels on either side of the pressure plate and there you are. So as you can see, there's a small hole right here where the pin will actually advance the film. So you wanna make sure that one of your purse approximately in the middle of your loop is right centered on that. The important thing about the loop and getting it centered is that it's not rubbing on the top or bottom. Uh, if it's rubbing somewhere, you're gonna get scratches on your film and that's definitely gonna affect your image. And now we're ready to throw the magazine on the camera. Uh, you wanna remove your cover, which exposes your film gate. We're gonna take the magazine, slide it through these two pins and lock it down. And we'll simply put this pin in the lock position so you can no longer remove the magazine. All of the SR series magazines have metal on the back of them because your battery actually has a magnet on it that will click and hold tight. At this point, the SR has a test button which you can essentially just press and it inches the film forward. If you're not getting any loud pops or scary noises, it's pretty safe to say that it's, it's the pin is in the right spot. So we'll just advance the camera by running the motor and it's ready to go. And now that we've tested the film and we know that it's good to go, we're gonna go ahead and take the magazine back off and tape the doors. Today we loaded some dummy film in here, so it's not really imperative which color we use. But again, we use blue for daylight, red for tungsten, and black for exposed after we've exposed our film. So today, we'll say it's daylight. So what you wanna do is any of the seams of the door, just cover them up. Make sure you're not covering up your footage counter here. Just make sure you get every seam just in case there's anything funky going on with the magazine that may allow light to get in. And this isn't only with these old magazines. I mean, if you look at behind the scenes on some major motion pictures that are shot on Panavision or, or some, you know, newer model cameras, they always tape the door. Um, there's just something about taping all of the seams that gives you that warm and fuzzy feeling that there's no light gonna get into your image. There we go. And you can see that all of our seams are nice and taped up. And we just have one last thing as far as tape goes to keep any rogue key grip or gaffer out of your magazine. Just throw some tape over the latches 
and then they have to work extra hard to open them. Okay, and finally, make sure that you're labeling. Again, this is a dummy roll. I'm just gonna put 250D because I don't even know what that film is really. Um, and we wanna put the date and the stock and then the production. Um, and we'll just throw this right on the smart side of the camera right there. So when we're on an actual production and we're on set, we're gonna have film labels for every magazine. These film labels will have the date, the stock, um, the production, the lab that we're gonna send it to, and all sorts of things for processing and for transfer. Uh, but for this demo right here, a piece of tape that tells you when you loaded it and the, the kind of stock that you have in it will be just fine. As for any film camera that takes film mags, you can preload them the night before. Um, but the beautiful thing about the SR2 is that there's no visible film loop. So it's up against the pressure plate and it has a cover. So these things pack really nice and compact and they're just ready to slap on the back of the camera. If there's anything you'd like to see us cover on this channel, leave it in the comment section down below. Tell us what camera you're shooting on, any technical questions, we'll try and field those. Um, if there is anything that you'd like us to cover, let us know. We started this channel for all of you out there, so we want the content to be relevant to you. See you next time.